There's no doubt that the Yamaha YHL 700A that I had actually made a video of earlier is a great pair of premium headphones. But the price is premium too and not everybody can spend that kind of money. Enter the Yamaha YHE 700A. I know that names can get confusing. So this is the E variant and that is the L variant. But this is a pair of headphones that is routinely available for about rupees, you know, 21,000 and actually under rupees 21,000, making it a direct competition to Bose and Sony's more popular headphones. Now, the E700A might not have all the bells and whistles of the L700A, but it does come with ANC. And I'm presuming a well-tuned sound signature as well, considering Yamaha has a great legacy when it comes to audio products. If you don't know me yet, I'm Arshad, you're watching Track and Tech English. Before we move on to the video, I want to make a disclaimer. This video has been made in collaboration with Yamaha, but all the thoughts that are being mentioned out here, all the opinions that I will share with you guys are completely my own with absolutely no filter. Now, Yamaha, of course, is no stranger to a premium experience. We saw that with the L700A, and that is true for the E700A as well. And you get this big box with a very modern design language when you pay money for it. Inside which you get a hard case, which feels very sturdy, and it will definitely protect your headphones. And it has this, you know, fall leather finish, which feels very soft to the touch. Now, this uniquely shaped case houses the headphones themselves, and they can be folded flat for, you know, stowing away easily. We got the black variant of these headphones for uh, you know, testing out. But there's also a white variant which looks really good and Yamaha actually says that that's the most selling one on Amazon. Now, if you like the kind of content we make, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. And also don't forget to give us a like and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. Now, apart from the headphones, you get a 3.5 to 3.5 mm cable for a wired connection. You get a Type A to Type C cable for charging. And of course, you also get an airplane adapter as well. One look at the headphones and you'll see that the perfectly circular ear cuffs are bigger than most headphones out there. But what that means is that they cover my fairly large ears very easily. Plus, the headphone cups are very deep and therefore the drivers are actually placed much further away from your ears and which actually helps with a better sound state. More about that in the audio section of the review. Now, the headphones also come with a metal headband, but they don't have that much height. However, I had to extend the metal headband extender to the full limit to actually fit my head. So if anybody has a larger head than mine, that's actually possible in the world, then these headphones might not actually be comfortable for them for long listening sessions. Also, these headphones weigh about 325 grams. But what I like about it is the clamping force is not too tight. And therefore, once they fit me properly, I could listen to them for long and without any discomfort whatsoever. For my head, if your head is smaller than mine, they are definitely going to find it comfortable. I would have ideally liked slightly thicker padding on the headband though. That would have added to the comfort of these, you know, when you're wearing them. Overall, these headphones are built actually very well and should last a long time if you, of course, take care of them properly. And you might have to maybe change the ear pads after a few years. Now, there are buttons on the underside of the ear cups. The left ear cup has the ANC toggle switch and the 3.5 mm connection port. The right ear cup has all the other buttons lined up. The volume rocker, the play pause switch, power button and a type C port. Now, all these buttons offer a great tactile feedback once you've actually trained your muscle memory to figure out where they are actually placed. However, touch controls on the ear cups themselves would have been a more modern approach to, you know, building controls because that's what's available on the Bose and Sony options. Connectivity wise, the Yamaha YH E700 actually uses Bluetooth 5.0 connection and it is a very strong stable connection. I had absolutely no connectivity drops during my testing period. But I was slightly disappointed that you do not get multi-point connectivity with these headphones, which I think should be a standard feature on every single Bluetooth audio product that is launched above rupees 5000. Now, Yamaha has a special headphones controller app with which you can change the settings of the headphones themselves. But on the E700, you have fewer options compared to the L700. Now, you get the option to switch between 
ANC on and off and also you know to switch on the ambient sound mode. But there's also that special listening care option and the listening optimizer option which are uniquely Yamaha features that you get with their headphones. Now listening care is a real-time monitoring system that analyzes data like you know the level of the sound that is playing, the dynamic range of the sound whether it's speaking or not to ensure that you know the sound doesn't peak when you're actually listening to it. Now Yamaha has specifically designed listening care to ensure that one listens to music without harming their hearing because we generally have a tendency to listen to music louder than we ideally should. On your screen right now is a handy chart showcasing what is the ideal listening level in decibels basis your usage pattern based on the International Telecom Union's guidelines. Now with the Yamaha YH E700A you actually don't have to worry about these issues. And listening optimizer is the other feature that actually optimizes the sound that comes to your ears, bases the seal of your uh, ears themselves. It actually uses an internal mic to figure out the distance between the ear and the driver. If you do get the chance, actually try it out by using a pair of sunglasses, you know, wearing them and then, you know, uh, removing them. Or even if you have, uh, you know, prescription glasses, you can try them out on too. You will see that with the glasses on, it sounds slightly different and with them off, it sounds slightly different. In that, it actually tunes the sound to ensure that uh, you know with, if you have glasses on and the mids are pushed and you know you can hear them clearly and the bass is also pushed slightly uh, or the levels are increased to make them sound better now coming back to the headphones controller app this app can also be used for firmware updates of course but I would have ideally liked the option to you know have an equalizer which is not available at the moment that's a bit of a letdown now, where the Yamaha YH E700A shines is in its sound tuning. It can go as low as 8 hertz in the frequency range, but that's just the number. But what I noticed is that the rumble in sub bass is just fantastic. In a song like Reconnaissance by Mitch Murder or any other EDM song, you will feel that the sub bass growl is very good on these and you feel that rattle in your head as well. But it's a tight kind of sub bass and therefore it's a lot of fun and exciting to listen to. Now the bass tuning has been done in a way that it sort of replicates the you know experience of using speakers with proper woofer setup. More importantly, there's absolutely no bass bleed in the low end. It's a very cohesive and tight attack. Even in a very complex track uh, like uh, uh by Thundercat, you can hear that the timing is very good. Now the E700A is a pair of Bluetooth headphones and they actually sound sometimes as good as wired headphones in this price range. Talking about which, the wired performance of these headphones is even better. What is also particularly good about the E700A's sound signature is the you know sound staging and the imaging, which I feel is best in class for a pair of wireless headphones. Now the treble quality is also very good with no unnecessary spikes. But what I wish could have been better is that the mids should have been slightly more forward for a more balanced sound signature. Now it's a proper U-shaped sound, which is more fun, more exciting, and more uh, you know tuned for the masses out there. Now, if you listen to a lot of pop, rock, hip hop, EDM, this is the kind of sound that you'll absolutely love. Also, like I mentioned before, the wired mode is really good. You feel that immediately the fidelity has improved when you connect it using a wire of the 3.5 mm cable that you get with it. And these are one of the very few headphones out there that sound sound good in both the wired and the wireless mode. Now coming to the ANC, it is definitely not as effective as Bose or uh, you know, Sony's solution. But Yamaha is very cognizant of that fact and they've stated very clearly that that's not what they're going for. They just want to ensure that the ANC blocks out some amount of noise without actually you know affecting the tonality or the sound signature which i think that yamaha has definitely achieved noise cancellation in general the passive noise cancellation in general is good and with the extra anc and if you listen to music at 50 percent volume you're definitely not going to listen to uh, you know uh, external sounds so that's good enough but yeah i mean if you want a better anc uh, headphones especially if you want to use it in the plane then you should look for sony or bose 100% those will be better. I also do like the ambient sound mode on the Yamaha E700A. It actually makes you sound very natural or makes the environment sound very natural and doesn't sound robotic. Of course, a lot of people buy these headphones for meetings and Zoom calls as well, but the mics on the Yamaha YH uh, E700A are not that great. Take a listen for yourself. You'll realize that they don't sound that good. Mic check, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mic check, mic check, mic check. This is an audio quality test on the Yamaha YG7 today. We look more to get about it.
Now Yamaha claims that you can get about 35 hours on a single charge, but in my testing, I got only about 28 hours at 70% volume. Maybe if you drop down the volume to about 50%, you could get higher battery life. In general, even 28 hours is pretty good enough. So there's, that's not really something to worry about. What I noticed with the Yamaha YH E700A is that it is trying to win you over with the basics. The sound is tuned in such a way that it is definitely crowd pleasing and the bass is actually very well tuned as well. In fact, I noticed that the low end impact was better with ANC on than ANC off. However, if you're looking at alternatives, there is the Sony WH-1000XM4, which is definitely more expensive, but uh, you know, you do get better ANC, you get more features, and of course you get support for LDAC, which ensures that your music sounds very, very close to natural and that's something that uh, you know Sony is going for whereas Yamaha is going for the more fun exciting sound and if you ask me I don't really like the Bose NC700 sound signature I would prefer Yamaha or Sony over these which one would you pick do let me know in the comment section below and what you guys think of the Yamaha YH E700A well that's it from me until next time this is Ashad signing off keep tracking and stay safe